Hello and welcome to this edition of Intelligent I.O. Matters from QLogic, a Cavium company. My name is Todd Owens and I'm the HPE OEM Field Marketing Manager here at QLogic. In this video, I want to talk about a hot topic in the storage world, the protocol wars, iSCSI or Fiber Channel. Which protocol is best for your customer? Well, as a vendor who supplies technology for both, I believe I represent a pretty unbiased view. So let's get started. So which is the best protocol? When I go out and talk to the HPE field, HPE partners, and customers, here's what I hear. iSCSI is only for entry or SMB customers. Or, fiber channel is faster. Or how about iSCSI is low cost and easy to deploy. And finally, fiber channel SANs are complex and difficult to deploy, manage, and diagnose. Well, what's the real answer? To be honest, none of these is exactly true. The answer is, it depends. And it depends on what's most important to your customer. So let's take a few minutes here and explore this in a little bit more detail. When talking to customers about shared storage connectivity, there are several factors that need to be considered and are listed here. There's no one size fits all answer, no matter what the manufacturers tell you. When it comes to iSCSI versus fiber channel, each transport has different capabilities when it comes to things like bandwidth, transactional performance or latency. And the same is true from a cost manageability diagnostics perspective as well. The real question is how does your customer prioritize each of these issues? That's where you need to start. Let's start by comparing the technical attributes based on data sheets for 10 gig Ethernet iSCSI to Gen 5 16 gig fiber channel HBAs as these are the most common connectivity options for today's modern IT environment. For bandwidth, 16 is bigger than 10, so Fiber Channel has a clear advantage here. For transactional performance, you might be surprised to see iSCSI with higher IOPS rating than Fiber Channel. From a latency perspective, Fiber Channel is the clear choice. And for efficiency, uh, both use the same encoding scheme, so this is a tie. In terms of resiliency and error correction, Fiber Channel has a few more capabilities like forward error correction and T10 protection information or T10PI, although forward error correction is being implemented in higher performing 25 gig Ethernet solutions down the road. Uh, from a management perspective, uh, both have multiple options, but Fiber Channel has a few more capabilities in their management schemes. And then finally, from a cost per port perspective, there's a pretty big range for Ethernet with Fiber Channel right smack in the middle. So what's the right answer? iSCSI or Fiber Channel? Eh, I think we need to dig a little bit deeper before we draw any conclusions. Let's compare the transactional performance. The top graph here shows the IOPS performance for a QLogic 57810S controller running iSCSI offload. Now this is the same controller that's used in the HPE 530 series flexible network adapters and the CN1100R CNAs. The bottom chart is the IOPS curve for QLogic 2660 series adapters, which are equivalent to the HPE SN1000Q 16 gig HPA from QLogic. As published in the datasheet, the iSCSI adapter can achieve 1.5 million IOPS, but this is achieved at a 512 byte block size. The same can be said for the fiber channel HPA, as it achieves its published spec of 1.2 million IOPS at the same 512 byte block size. But what block size? is your customer's application running at. 4K, 8K or more? When you really look at the data, what you see is that the IOPS performance of iSCSI is best when the block sizes are below 2K. Fiber channel is the choice for IOPS performance when block size is above 2K. So the lesson here is, don't go by what's just published on the data sheet. Now let's talk about deployment and cost. I hear all the time that iSCSI is a low cost solution because people rationalize that can, to connect storage, they can simply add an iSCSI VLAN to their existing production network. That sounds like a good idea, but is it? I really call this poor man's iSCSI. Why? Well, that's because there's no real redundancy built into this approach and it's difficult to control the quality of service in terms of bandwidth to the storage resources and depending on the workload the storage traffic could potentially overwhelm the CPU, the network adapter, and other network resources. The proper way to connect iSCSI to shared storage is using dedicated adapters with iSCSI offload, 
like converged network adapters, and also on a dedicated storage network with two paths for high availability. This ensures full bandwidth control and quality of service for the storage traffic, minimizes CPU utilization, and leaves the processor resources available for running applications or deploying more virtual machines in virtual environments. Another bonus is that it frees up the Ethernet port on the production network to implement a teaming approach so that you have a high availability there as well. Now let's look at deploying a fiber channel SAN for a moment. This looks a lot like the iSCSI SAN, right? Yeah, the only thing we change really is the HBA and switch technology. We replaced the 10 gig CNA with a 16 gig fiber channel HBA, and we replaced the 10 gig Ethernet switch with a Gen 5 16 gig fiber channel switch. So when you look at the SAN architecture, the right way to do both iSCSI and fiber channel is exactly the same. All this rolls up into a cost comparison, and I break this down on this chart here in terms of cost per port. There's no question that iSCSI with 10G base T is the lowest cost option, but nothing's for free. When you implement 10G base T, there's a penalty you pay in terms of latency that's an order of magnitude higher than iSCSI using SFP Plus uh, with fiber channel optic cables. Direct attached copper connectivity with iSCSI or, or DAC is a good low cost option, but there's a limitation here too, and it's the cable length. Uh, direct attached copper cabling is typically only supported up to about seven meters in length. Surprisingly, iSCSI with SFP plus optics and fiber cable is the highest cost per port at almost $3,500 per port. That's because the 10 gig SFP plus optics are very expensive, even when compared to 16 gig fiber channel optics. In the middle of the cost curve is 16 gig fiber channel options uh, at just about $2,600 per port. So where does iSCSI make sense? Well, first, iSCSI on an Ethernet connection is the only option when you're dealing with both block and file storage connectivity. If cost is the number one priority over everything else, then iSCSI with 10G base T is the absolute best option. And if customers are using small block sizes and transactional performance is important, iSCSI is a great choice. Or if connecting to network attached storage or hyper-converged appliances, iSCSI is the protocol of choice. Where's fiber channel the best fit? Well, when performance is the overall priority, iSCSI simply can't compare to fiber channel when considering all the performance factors, including bandwidth, IOPS, and latency. And if high availability is a requirement, fiber channel is the best choice because of the high resiliency features like forward error correction and T10PI, as well as much more robust monitoring and diagnostic capability for fiber channel SAN management in software like Brocade Network Advisor. There's just nothing like that on the Ethernet side to manage storage traffic. If connecting flash storage, fiber channel is the only real choice. Why? Well, the combination of latency and IOPS performance characteristics of 16 gig fiber channel are very well suited to allow flash storage to run at optimal performance. And finally, fiber channel is the best choice for applications like video, backup, or disaster recovery as these tend to use large block sizes in excess of 128 kilobytes and need the available bandwidth that Fiber Channel offers. So to summarize, here's my best practice recommendations. Using Flash, go with 16 gig Gen 5 Fiber Channel. Connecting to NAS or hyper-converged appliances, eh, iSCSI is the answer there. If you're concerned about manageability, diagnostics and performance, then lead with Fiber Channel and if cost is the absolute number one priority, iSCSI with 10G base T connection is by far the lowest cost option. So as I said in the beginning, which is the best protocol? Well, it just depends. You know, I'll leave it at this. If performance and reliability matter, then lead with fiber channel. If cost is the ultimate driver, then iSCSI is a good choice. The key is have a conversation with your client and make sure that you understand their requirements before making any kind of protocol recommendation. For more information on what QLogic and HPE are doing, check out our HPE microsite at www.qlogic.com slash info slash HPE. Here you're going to find lots of really cool information, product guides, tech briefs, and all kinds of good things uh, around QLogic and HPE technology. If you're interested in training, we have a dedicated HPE training website at hpe.qlogictraining.net. Uh, here you'll find HPE dedicated training and certification options. Also, uh, check out more of our videos on YouTube on the QLogic TV channel and 
follow us on Twitter and join the conversation on LinkedIn uh, with our QLogic and HPE community out there. Well, that's it for this session of Intelligent IO Matters. I hope you found the information useful. I want to thank you for your time and attention. If you have any questions, please reach out to us via email, Twitter, or LinkedIn, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day.